What's up, guys? Holland Union, OG Fitness. So today, the most important thing that you have to focus on when you're starting judo as an old man <laughs> or an adult or whatever, right? Like if you start at five, you probably don't need this video because you're you probably already know how to break fall. So break fall is the first thing that you have to really concern yourself with and that you have to master because it's going to allow you to progress a lot faster in judo for many reasons and it has a lot of benefits guys so i made this video because i made another video sometime last week i believe and it was about the second thing that you had to focus on so then somebody asked me and one of the boys asked me hey make a video on break falling and i'm pretty sure there's one floating around somewhere on my channel but it's been a minute, and so why not make a new one and give you guys a little bit more insight into my updated uh, views on break falling? Okay, so break falling, guys, is kind of like the equivalent of learning how to float, okay, when you're learning swimming. So when you learn how to swim, one of the first things they teach you is actually how to float. So you do the star. So you lie back, you, you lie on your back like this, okay? And then you spread out your arms and your legs. And then from there, well, you breathe in and you just float, okay? You have to know how to float. Why? Because if you know how to float, what happens is that you're not afraid of drowning. You're like, okay, I got it. And then the second most important thing, it also has to do with uh, floating in a sense, staying afloat. So, you know, now you're vertical. You're not just lying on your back, but you're staying vertical in the pool and then you're turning your, your arms you're moving your arms and your legs you're scissoring your legs and you're turning your hands your arms in a circles like this okay so that you know how to stay afloat so once you catch those two things voila now your fear of drowning is uh greatly reduced so if it's greatly reduced then now you can go about you know learning how to swim because you know how to float you know how to uh, stay afloat so it's the same thing with break falling, very similar. So when you know how to break fall, okay, what it's going to do is that, well, first of all, you're not going to hurt yourself because one of the things about break falling is that that's the, the main objective of learning how to break fall is so that when you do get thrown, because you will get thrown, <laughs> you take the fall properly so you don't get concussed. Okay, because if you don't keep your chin down when you do it, your head's going to snap back and you're going you're gonna to hurt your head. You're going to get concussed or worse. And, of course, if you stick your arm out, okay, when, you, um, when you're falling and then you're not supposed to, then what happens is that, well, you could break your arm. You know, you could break your arm. You could hurt your wrist. You could break your, uh, your – you could bust up your shoulder, all kinds of things, right? So that's the first thing. Let me look at my notes here. Oh, guys, by the way, I'm not making a video. Like, I, I don't really enjoy, honestly, like making videos of, of technique. I will, but I mean, if there's good videos out there already, okay, I'm going to put it down in the um, in the description uh, box. And I found a great video for you guys. And uh, you'll see. There's no talking in it, and it's from the Kodokan. And they show you how to progress to you know full break fall like while somebody's throwing you it's really really good so let me play this for you guys while i continue uh yapping away and explaining to you guys a little bit more in depth what it's all about so check this out i like this view perfect so do you guys see that okay i'm trying to full screen this this thing Oh, wait, I got to play it. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. But I'll put the link in the description box so you guys can check this video out. But I just want to play it while we're while I'm chatting away because it's more entertaining uh, that way a little bit, I think. Okay, this video, let me... Hey, man, where's the video, man? There you go. Won't be long. Sorry about that one. Okay, so you guys should be seeing it now. 
It's rolling. See, Kodokan. And the Japanese, listen, I didn't learn it like this. I did not learn it like this. But I did not learn it like this. Me, turn down the volume a little bit on this, uh, on this SOB because, uh, you know. There you go. So no volume. All right, back to me yapping away. I did not learn it like this. And then when I saw this video and I found this video, I was like, why? Why did nobody teach it to me like this? You know why? Because this is the Japanese way and it's their sport and they're the best at it in the world. So they definitely know what they're doing. They're ultra refined, uh, ultra detailed. So I think it would have been, I think I'm actually gonna show this to, uh, to the beginners in my class. Okay. So now back to what I was saying. Um, so once you know how to, so the, the first thing, the, the reason why you want to learn how to break fall properly is so you don't get hurt. Okay. That's one. And the second thing is that, well, if you know how to break fall properly, then you have no fear of getting thrown. So if you have no fear of getting thrown, what happens is that you actually attempt to throw people. And if you attempt throws when you're doing randori, okay, then you get better. You get better faster. And that's really important because there's so many beginners, guys, that they're, they just don't want to, to throw because they're kind of afraid to get countered, to get thrown. And sometimes it's because they have a bad experience right from the get-go because some, some fool that they, that they go with. And most of the time, it's not somebody who's advanced and high level usually it's uh somebody at their level or a little bit higher that's that are better than them that are able to throw them but don't have the control and the maturity and you know to really dial it back and sometimes guys just don't know how to throw it and even hold you back which is you know kind of silly so and then they had that bad experience and then after that they don't want to co co come in for a throw anymore because you know like they don't want to get smashed but if you're not afraid of falling, then you'll attempt stuff. Okay, so it actually makes your judo better. Now, the other thing, uh, da, 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 da. one thing as well when, you, when you're not afraid of falling is that you can accept a fall when you have to. So in judo, like in, in BJJ, okay, there's like there's a certain point when you're fighting and let's say the guy goes in for a fro, you're resisting it, but then you get to this point where you know it's 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 done, it's checkmate. So when it's checkmate, you take the fro, right? Like you don't you don't try to resist it, resist it. Because if you resist it and then you fall funny, then yeah, you're gonna get hurt. So what is this point where you're your checkmate? Like for example, in in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, if you have somebody's back, eesh, that's it's not it's not the end yet. But if they if they slap on the uh, the rear naked choke, it's pretty much checkmate. You're not getting out of that, man. You know, so it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, if you're really lucky and the guy maybe isn't experienced enough, and you you muscle your way out of it, you fight for your life, you might get out of it. But chances are. It's like 99%, you're 95, 99, whatever, you're done. You're done, right? So in judo, it's the same thing, man. There's a certain point where you're losing, you're so off balance that there's no way, there's no way you're getting out of that. So you have to understand where that point is. And it takes a little bit of time. It takes being thrown a lot to to know, okay, no, screw this. I'm taking the fall, right? So if you take the falls like you're supposed to you're good. You're not going to get hurt. So it's really important to understand um, when to take those falls. And the only way to, to get, uh, to be able to get to that point is to actually, um, well, go in for throws and do randori and all that, and not have that fear because it is going to block you if you guys are afraid of falling. Okay. So on to my other point. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. So how would you, oh, the video is done. And now we have Jesse in camp. I like this guy. He's kind of, he talks very, very soft spoken and all that. But then when you look at his content, it's actually, it's actually good stuff, man. So, oh, I'm gonna, 
uh, I want to critique one of not critique, but uh, I want to make a video about one of the videos he made. It was really interesting. Like he was talking to this Aikido guy. Anyways, off subject. Okay, so getting back to, um, you know, break fall. Let me let me put back the the judo stuff, man. I don't know how to put this stuff on. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, on repeat. Voila. Voila. On repeat. Okay. So now there is a way that you could get used to um, getting thrown and taking the falls a little bit faster than just Fu Randori is that you do this when uh, guys do uh, Nagi Komi. So basically they're, they're just practicing throws. So, or, and you can do even extra. You can have guys throw you, guys who have control, uh, throw you and then slow it down and then, you know, let you land. So you start off on, you could uh, get them to throw you on the crash mat first. So you get, uh, you know, so you get a sense of how it is to be thrown and be spinning in the air because it's a crazy feeling, guys. It's like when you get thrown, a lot of the times guys go in fast, but just because they go in fast and they throw you hard, they could still, the guys would control, they could still hold you back. Okay. They're not going to smash you through the ground. They're going to hold you back at that last second. Pull on that, uh, pull on that sleeve so there only one shoulder touches and you'll be okay. It's it's a lot, uh, a lot better than than both shoulders smashing onto the ground. So you want to get used to that speed, that acceleration, and that like being upside down in the air feeling, right? And then so that way you 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 get used to it, and then it not be, it doesn't become a thing anymore. Like you're like, oh okay, that's what it is. So then of course on the, on the crash mat, you get these guys to throw you. And trust me, there's always guys or gals that will be happy to throw your ass. You tell them, hey, I want to get uh, over my fear of, uh, of break falling or not necessarily fear, but hey, I just want to get better at break falling and let me know if I'm doing it right. And your feet have to be in the right position. There's a lot of little details. That's why this video, I'm going to put it down in the description. You guys should check it out. And so that's, that's really important. Okay. You have people throw you. Now, the other thing is that it also conditions your body too for impact, right? The fact that you're always slamming into the ground like that, like it conditions your body. It's kind of like, um, you know, if you if you practice Muay Thai or you practice boxing, you're hitting the back, you're kicking the back, bang, bang. Like that's a form of conditioning. Your bones are going to get harder on that. Your muscles too, your joints and all that. So it's it's a uh, it's a good thing. Like it's it's good for 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 your body. So you have to practice these 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 uh, these break falls. Um, and it's the first thing that you got to master because if you get this right, I'm telling you, spend a little bit more time on it, put a lot of emphasis on it, you know, pr like come in a little bit early and, you know, start practicing your break falls. Normally, uh, not at every club, but normally when, when you start your class, you're break falling and you're doing rolls and all that. And, um, you know, but if you're, if you're a beginner and it's not enough because sometimes they don't do enough of that at the beginning. Right. It depends on the coach. It depends on the class. And sometimes it's just that you need more. So you just come in a little bit earlier and do more. Or even at the end, just, you know, when your body's warm, it's it's a good time too to like really warm compared to at the beginning. At the beginning, obviously, they're going to do general warm up. Then they're going to start doing like the break falling and all. Sometimes not. <laughs> but I hope that made sense, guys. So break falling is super important. If um, you don't know how to position your your body properly, um it's just gonna it's gonna suck man you know and i'm gonna make another video about the importance of well mm, hmm, being lighter as light as possible because if you're if you're overweight and you're heavy it's gonna be hard on the joints as well man but if you're if you're just like heavy because you're you're muscular then that's different right because your muscles your tendons uh you know and your ligaments are strong, so it's gonna it's gonna be okay. But if you're overweight and then you you break fall, it's gonna be harder on you, man. You know. Um, so definitely get, have your weight in check if possible. If it's not where um, it, it it should be, it could be. Then yeah, work on that. Like I'll, I'll make another video on how I um, suggest you guys do it because there's a lot of information out there in regards to. Um, what do you call it? Uh, like losing weight and all that. And dude, I'm a guys. I'm a, I'm a fitness guy, right? I love this stuff. So, and 
I used to train people as well. And now at this point, like pretty much got it down pat. I got the, I got, there's like the overall strategy that you have to understand, which is actually quite simple. But then after that, it's about tactics, right? And everybody's going to have different tactics depending on what their preference is and their lifestyle. And yeah, so I'll, I'll make a video explaining how I go about it, like keeping, uh, keeping my weight down. Cause just so you guys know, I'm five, eight and 150 pounds. So I'm pretty like, Hey, it's Jesse in camp again. <laughs> He's pretty young there. It must be an old video because yeah. Anyways, look at that haircut. Beautiful. <laughs> okay guys, that's it for this video. And if you liked the video, then, you know, give it a like share. Of course that helps the channel grow trying to grow this for you guys so that we can have a, a huge, huge community and help each other out in our martial art journey. So, Oh, also guys, my email, right? Send me your videos. If you, uh, of you training or doing something or competing and all that, uh, if you guys want me to break down, uh, and give you guys, break it down and give you guys some feedback and the whole community too, to give you guys some feedback. And yeah, that's it for now. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.